All right, so with the blockchain markets heating up, crypto is on fire. And of course, we'll be covering Bitcoin and a ton of tokens today on the charts. Our friend, Mr. Evan Aldo, back in studio. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into Tech Bath. All right, man. Great, Great to, to be you. on. Yeah, Great thanks for having back. me. Yeah. Awesome. So let's get into a few things, Evan. Um, first, I want to kind of touch on, well, where, where are you right now? I mean, how, how's everything going with you? you it's okay? good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. You know, I mean, Bitcoin still has been, you know, I'm still in a heavy Bitcoin portfolio. Really happy about that. You know, Bitcoin's outperformed a lot of these. Wish I could have gotten an Ordi or some of these that pumped up or Python, some of these that pumped up. Some of these up, little, but, little runs. That yeah, you got to be, you got to be attentive for that. All right. So the headline today was wh whether or not Bitcoin's overheated. You've got, you know, this right here. 82% since Jim Cramer, of course, told investors to sell nine months ago. A lot of people look at Bitcoin right now. I mean, are you getting phone calls now from the normies? No, I'm not, you know, and I think retail is still kind of asleep. That's a good thing. Yeah, which yeah, is, a good thing. It, it is a good thing. Yes, it is. I was surprised. You know, you, you thought a lot more people would come in being yep. over 40K, but I think we may have to wait till over 50K or even close to all-time highs to get retail back. A lot of, a lot of people looking at uh, this right here, uh, Bitcoin short sellers po possibly being prepped here. Analyst, of course, sees no sign of this overheating. One of the things here in the tweet right here, people keep trying to time the top, shorts, et cetera, taking profits, et cetera. But look at the data, literally nothing overheated about this rally. What do you say to that when you look at the charts? It is up a lot. So I don't think, I mean, it is when you look at the charts, I mean, it's obviously up a lot. I mean, this rally starting in, you know, September, is up approximately 83%. So, I mean, any asset up that much in that short amount of time, slightly overheated. However, I do think you can come up a bit more. And we look at the history of Bitcoin, you know, in these bull type years, it does come up, for, could come up for two years straight generally. Now, mm -hmm. the next big, big area, there's two pretty big areas. You have a wick right here at around 48K, high 47s. That's a huge area. After that, you have the low 50s, which we may see. You got a green dot on the five day right here. Now, this is a larger time frame. This could take more time to play out. We've seen a big jump up so far, but I think you could see a little bit of diminished returns in this rally, and we may get more boring, more sideways, potentially on the way up to 47K. And that may let a few alts run for a little bit. And what I want to also show you is, you know, a lot of this rally has looked similar to 2015, which I know was a long time ago in terms of um, the four-year cycle. But if we go back to kind of that area, I wanted to show you, you know, where was it? S December... Yeah, around, where was it, December of, or November of 2015, kind of right here, you had that big kind of jump up, but you gradually, you know, this was November, end of 2015, big jump up. You had a pretty big drop down. It looks bad, but it wasn't as bad as it really looks. That was around 30, you know, 35% down, mm -hmm. but then you gradually kept going up for the next two years right here. So we may gradually see something of that nature into the end of kind of 2025, all the way up to, let me clean up the chart just uh tiny bit here um what do you oops, think wrong one <laughs> anyway no. no i got the sorry i got the wrong chart up but, what do you yeah. i was going to ask you a question what do you think in terms of when we see you know kind of like the last rally mm -hmm. we saw that early move in 2021 and then the late move to 69k and you look at retail in general where do you think the entry point is going to be for retail are you looking at any significant thing do you th think the etf will drive it or do you think it's going to be something maybe more into 2024, further in with the market getting a little bit softer, things getting a little bit more stable in terms of the Fed? I think that retail is not going to come back until probably after 50K, probably with the Bitcoin ETF. I, you know, if I had to guess, I would think the ETF would be a big FOMO area. We'd probably have a fallout after that, potentially with the Fed, Fed pivoting around that time, sometime early to mid next year. You have a, you know, a pullback maybe to 40K, maybe to 30K. That's the big fear. And then you kind of come up yeah. after that for the next give or take year what, and a half. What is your strategy when you look at, uh, potentially the ETF gets done January 10th, um, and whether or not you would position to maybe exit for some profits there, or would you continue to just fly on through and ride this one all the way I don't the exit too, too much based on news. I exit more based on, you know, big areas. And historically, mm -hmm. the place to exit is not going to be really anytime soon. If you look at the place to exit, it's once every four years for approximately the last kind of three months of the year, October, November, December of 21. You know, four years before that, we could look at, you know, October, November, December of 2017. And even if this chart um, has enough data here, where was, okay, not enough data on this particular chart on the Coinbase chart, but yep. you could look at the Bitstamp chart, the same exact thing, which the um, the same exact thing, which 
Bitcoin follows kind of that that um, you know rally upward if you look at the end of kind of that for your cycle end mm-hmm. of 2013 right there. So that's the place where I'd really be looking to get out. I would hold the Bitcoin until then. And more of the question is, you know, should you buy ETH as opposed to Bitcoin now? Should you buy all coins as opposed to Bitcoin? Yep. That's kind of a tough question. When I look at Bitcoin dominance right here, this still looks pretty bullish. So I still think Bitcoin may outperform the majority of alts just for a little bit more if we could get up to 56, 57 percent right here. But in the grand scheme of things, the time where Ethereum bottomed out against Bitcoin was September of 2019. So four years later, end of this year would be a good place. Well, I mean, you know, when we uh, had you on in the spring this year, quite a bit, we had you on the weekly shows and then, we, Mm -hmm. you know, through the summer, kind of the repositioning some of the shows. One of the things you were saying is uh, looking at the alts for the fall, uh, which has been pretty much the call. I mean, yes. we've seen a lot of alts, Solana, Avalanche, all of which continue to move. We'll look at those charts today. Are you still in a position of keeping money on the sideline around altcoins, or do you feel like this might be some entry opportunities? So I think it is a good entry opportunity, especially for some of the alts right here. Now, if we look at something like Cardano versus Bitcoin right here, just for example, you know, a lot of them kind of follow, you know, this isn't one that's been around a while. For one, two, three, four, five yellow X's on the weekly, hitting yep. a big point right here, money flow finally starting to come up. So I think converting, this is potentially where we could bottom out against Bitcoin for Cardano and for a lot of these altcoins. So I think the money that's kept on the side should be gradually kind of DCA'd into these alts until kind of the happening. So Mm. if you were to DCA until March, April, that's a good, what, four or five month period of DCA into alts and potentially moving some Bitcoin over into alts. I wouldn't be moving any Bitcoin over into alts until Bitcoin dominance is a little bit higher though, until that chart looks a little bit more I think bearish. this would be more sideline money, you know, coming into altcoins and potential some of these early stage movers, whether you look at, you know, the gaming sector, Web3 sector, mm-hmm. some of the things we've seen already within the uh, Solana ecosystem. Yep. Let me jump over to Coinbase for a second. Coinbase has been heated. We'll talk a little bit about Robinhood as well, but Coinbase, we'll take a look at their stock. They recently, just yesterday, announced this wallet connection uh, into Coinbase wallet, which is basically enabling uh, the ability to send money pretty much anywhere, kind of like uh, PayPal. PayPal, I'm not sure, without a Coinbase wallet, I'm not sure we will see the uptake, you know, because it's such an easy onboarding for PayPal. But, I mean, this is, of course, showing well on the stock itself. Do you like, because there's been some exits on Coinbase stock by ARK and Kathy. Right. What do you say right now in terms of Coinbase stock? It generally follows Bitcoin, and I don't think there's any you know real reason to believe that it won't continue to follow Bitcoin and potentially go higher. Now, I see exactly what Kathy's looking at. We're hitting a technical target, a huge place right here. This was the you know kind of support and resistance from March of 22 that we lost. To just keep going up and, and you know going right through this, you would at least probably see some consolidation here. But if Bitcoin keeps going forward, which I think it will over the next two years, you could potentially come up you know, even more and hit another technical target. Now, this could be a year away or more at this general high right here around mm. 336. Now, let's, I'm just curious where, how much higher that would be. That's that about was, another 100%. That's another 100% over the next two years would be pretty reasonable, especially if you do see, you know, Bitcoin going to 90K or 100K over the next two years. Yeah, and I think, that. I think uh, of course, her, you know, she's looking at trade opportunities right here. You can kind of see ARK executed the sale of about 237,000 Coinbase shares. So, that of course hit at 140. So this was a revenue of like 33 million for them. So wow. it was, it, I mean, good for their clients, which I could mm-hmm. see, you know, playing into this. Couple of other things here. Coinbase shares stand out as one of its most substantial daily disposals in 2023. We've seen that on their uh, ranking. And then they also liquidated some uh, GBDC as well. So that's another factor that will play into this. Again, all this mm-hmm. will be playing out within the yeah. ETF. What about Hood? You know, Robin Hood. A little bit underperforming in terms of earnings here recently, but then bounced right off of uh, around that eight dollar m- mark and has been flying ever since. What, what are your thoughts there? I kind of li- it's a riskier play, but I kind of like Hood right now. It's kind of almost in some type of Wyckoff accumulation with the first bottom there, second right there, third right there, and then we could break upward, hit a technical target around eighteen dollars. That Ooh. wick at sixteen is pretty big. It's a volatile thing. I mean, it's yep. only a nine billion dollar market cap. Um, when I zoom in a little bit here. Eh, money flow generally coming up, you know, I mean, it, I think it, this could be one of those things that rewards the 
the patient right here. And I mean, unless this goes bankrupt, which it, it could, I mean, there's that's the fear I've been hearing. But unless, as long as it succeeds, you're probably going to see 18 bucks within the next two years, I would say. All right. So let's take a look at some BRC uh, style tokens. Of course, a lot of people have been looking at everything from Ori to what's happening over on Stacks. In general, ordinals and what we're seeing within the Bitcoin ecosystem. If you think about this also of exit liquidity and the process mm -hmm. of how to get out of Bitcoin if people were looking to sell or convert to say USDC, not a lot of easy ways to do that. So when you look at something like an Ordi, I mean, obviously just here recently on the move, what are your thoughts? So for something like this that's going parabolic, the number one thing to look at that I like to look at is a really good top potential signal that we're not seeing just yet. You want to see a bearish divergence. You want to see momentum waves coming down while money flow is coming out on your daily um, while price is getting higher. So essentially you want to see another red dot above here and these momentum waves start coming down. You're not seeing that just yet. Um, I think our high was at 73 or something or close to it, actually 68, I believe. 75 is a big point. I mean, we're obviously in no man's land. We don't know. It could potentially go up to 100 before that happens. When I look at some of these larger time frames, the same thing could be said about the two day. We're still bullish until you see those um, bearish divs play yeah. out. So Bitcoin coming up to potentially, you know, 50K, 48K, it would not be impossible for this to jump up to 75 to 100. Well, and I think, you know, just as you guys know, um, when you get into these really highly volatile positions right now, which I think we are in, because mm -hmm. there's just so much movement in the market right now in a very short period of time. So right. just just as a reminder, guys, not a not financial advice, but as you look at what's happening in the market, you should always do your own research and make sure that you're in a position from a good balance position, whether it's your portfolio in crypto or other assets out there. Just keep that in mind. Always tread cautiously in these markets. Here's James Safer talking about Grayscale's Ethereum trust filing just got delayed. So even though this got delayed, I'm going to zoom in on that for a little bit. Um, even though it got delayed, ETH pretty much just said, nah, I'm going. See you guys later. Mm. There's a party happening. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. it took off to almost 2300. What do you like on ETH? Well, ETH right now, I mean, ETH has jumped up, yes. But if we look up, first chart I'll show you is ETH versus Bitcoin is down and yep. at a yearly low. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a make or break point. This is a very important point right here. If we lose this area, that's not good for ETH versus Bitcoin. And it could potentially um, go lower down to the low of 22, about a bit, a bit farther down, or potentially even lower if we do see a pullback at some point, say back to you know mid to low 30s it could drop more against Bitcoin. I do like ETH for the long term though, and I do think there's a good shot that right now we could bounce here off of this big point, and that would bring, if we bounce here against Bitcoin especially, that would bring us to this next big point of ETH, just under 2400, huge FIB level right here. And when I look at the larger time frames, like I was looking at in Bitcoin, money flow still has more time to come up on yeah. the three day. On the two day, looks good as well with that money flow. I think we could get up to 20, high 23s. If we could break above there, Man, I mean, you could probably get up open. to 27, 2800 potentially. That would, I think we need this to bounce here, though. We need this to bounce, and that's a little bit questionable on ETH versus Bitcoin. If I had to guess, though, I'd say maybe we see some consolidation for Bitcoin, and then if it goes sideways, ETH and some of these alts could Might finally pick up. Yeah, yeah. pick up. All right, you got a couple of things here. Solana price prediction from uh, Arthur Hayes. And whether or not it's going to reach its old old price, uh, and everybody knows Solana took a really strong run, and now of course that was when Solana was still kind of a baby, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of downtime, yeah. a lot of problems that made it through the you know the FTX winter. It has come back with a vengeance, and now is on par with payment systems with the likes of Visa and all those. What do you like about Solana, and is it a long-term hold for you? So Solana is really good. I mean, obviously, it's a large market cap. It's you know proved a lot of people wrong. It's came up a lot. I think it's going to do very good in the next bull run. I think some smaller caps, such as Avalanche, probably will do better in it over the two years just because of market cap. Yep. Right now, what I see in the charts is the next big level that we're looking at is between this pocket between $75 to $80. You got a nice little trigger wave right here on your six-hour. Momentum wave's coming up, trigger wave. If we can hold $62 as support, I think there's a good shot we could jump up to potentially 75. If Bitcoin jumps up to say 48K, 50K, I think this is a given 75 yeah. would happen. It looks pretty good. I mean, generally the price action right here, this pattern, pretty bullish. And if we look at it kind of a technical target from there to there, you know, you'd at least be looking at $70. So I think 75 is pretty likely. 
Evan, do you think, I mean, there's, you know, everybody hits this in the comments about some of the traders we've had on, and um, a lot of people have called for that reversal. Mm -hmm. And it didn't happen, or at least not yet. Do you think there's any risk whatsoever right now of seeing a full-on reversal of Bitcoin and or Ethereum? A full-on, yeah, pullback, yeah. I think it will um, inevitably happen at some point. I think it's not going to be that, that bad. And I think when it does happen, I think it's going to kind of mess up the people that are going crazy into things like already going crazy into the things that are just pumping up kind of out of nowhere. Yeah. Those are going to get hit hard so much against Bitcoin. When you do see that reversal because Bitcoin dominance has been so bullish, I do think ETH may continue to bleed against Bitcoin and the people just fumbling into alts right now are going to get hit pretty hard. People into Bitcoin, I mean, low 30s, I think you probably will see at some point within the next six months. That's mm -hmm. just how it, how it works. But I mean, from you know, 45K to low 30s, it's not that bad. Yeah, and I think the key there is going to be what altcoins, if you're looking at long-term holding, meaning all the way mm -hmm. through this cycle, when we see the market correct, what we might see in terms of regulation, all that lining up, you just have to keep, you know, keep watching the show right here. This is the place to do it because yep. you can kind of keep ahead of it. Make sure to smash the like button if you guys do like us bringing Evan in and others uh, to really break down on a lot of the charts. It is something we're trying to bring back into the studio, so we'll get more of that going on. All right, so I want to jump over to, of course, Solana-based altcoin now that has exploded, and that is Helium. Helium announced a massive nationwide $20 cell phone plan. This is something that Helium Mobile, of course, but Helium itself absolutely went crazy. When you look at the Helium chart right now, what do you think? Do you think this can hold, or is this just kind of... Uh, sell the news. So it's one of those things where it's a tiny bit tough because you are hitting a big point. This is where price was sticking to back in October 22, um, you know, about $4.30. When you look at the money flow on some of your high time frames, such as the three day, still looks pretty good. Still looks yeah. pretty strong in a lot of these high time frames. Weekly has great curvature now. That's a high time frame. That's bullish for probably the next two years, but we don't really know, you know, what's going to happen the next few weeks based, you know, next few days based on that. But when I look at kind of what I'm looking at here, if we could Break above kind of four, you know, break above five dollars. I think we get to our technical target around seven dollars and forty-five cents to this big point around eight dollars. So eight dollars could be what we're looking. I know it's kind of far away, but these small caps sometimes they could really ride. And with retail still kind of being asleep, some of these trigger waves. You see this trigger wave right here on the eight hour. That could be the catalyst upward. But you just gotta, you know, pay attention to your daily yeah. right here. Like I mentioned, if you see the money flow really start to come down like this on your daily and you get some bear divs, that's where it would be a nice kind of sell signal for this. Yeah, and I think that's in a scenario where if you're trading in and out of tokens like this, yeah, you know, for sure. Yeah. I want to go to this point right here, because this is hitting on a couple of things, their, their nationwide sell plan. But the focus that I want to hit on is right here in the article. And it says, all we need to do is cover 3% or even less of the geographic area where data is used the most. And this will result, this was, this struck me by a surprise, the data result will result in more than 50% of the T-Mobile traffic actually shifting to the Helium network. So if Helium is flowing at this level right now, mm -hmm. and this is early for it, if you go back and look at your chart all the way back to the last uh, bull run, let's yep, take a look at that chart. Right here. So that's what, this weekly looks really good, Paul. I mean, look at that trigger wave right yeah. there. This is exactly what you want to see. This is rare kind of bullish signs. And then you just jumped up right here, which is, um, I don't think I was had this on my radar in October, but I definitely would have bought this on this trigger wave. Now I'm kind of bummed out because I forgot about this one. <laughs> but, um, you know, you have a te if you break up above this area, you, know, you have a tech, this could take a year to happen though. You sure. get a technical target at around you know, $17 up to the $20 pocket. Um, and then once you break above $20, this is a long time away, right. but once you get above there, potentially that's where you toy with um, new all time highs potentially. Now, um, from here where we are to there, it's a 13x to a new all time high. I mean, you could, I mean, if, if, every, if the stars align, everything goes well in two years, you could be at $100. Maybe. Well, and I think the key is remember that this all time high that Helium hit last time was without their mobile network, mm -hmm. without deployment into Solana. I mean, there's a lot of things that has happened now with that project that could really play into yeah. a very positive thing. The other thing that if you guys are following our Market Sentiment Index, that right there has been, Helium has been one of the tokens that has been showing up on rising sentiment and then boom, this happens. Yeah. Obviously for reasons that are tied more to the service and also the flip 
onto the Solana ecosystem for sure. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of good stuff. That's good. All right, let's jump over to the next token, and that is Avalanche Republic Note. We did a full video on this, by the way. Go back and check the Avalanche video uh, with John Wu. We talked a little bit about Republic Note back then a couple of weeks ago, and their connection into INX and why it's so important. Now, part of this, this thing went live. Mainly, mm -hmm. it's basically a way for independent investors to be able to go into tokenized security. So think of it like a VC, but almost anyone being able to use a new tool set within tokenized securities. With that being the case, Avalanche, what do you like? Because it's flying right now. It's looking pretty good in the three-day right here. Our next big point for it's around $30. We're at 26 right now. I think $30 is going to be a pretty, pretty big area because that was, I believe, the high of uh, yep. yeah August 22, which is really big. If we could break above there, you're looking at 39. Now we have to really zoom out. These were you know, May 21 kind of numbers that we would look at historically. Um, you know, three days looking nice for the long term. You know, that could be a, you know, this could be the start of a nice kind of rally over the next two years that we've seen in, as we've seen in history. So, you know, you're going to see consolidation pullbacks at some point. Um, $30 could be a big place where you see a pullback down to, who knows, $20. Then you, you know, continue forward from there. But macro is looking very, very strong in this. And I think we will inevitably within the next two years, probably get somewhere close, at least close to all-time highs. Yeah, the strengths right now with Avalanche, if you guys follow our, our channel at all, if you're not subscribed, take some time right now, just hit that subscribe button, uh, click that little bell. Sometimes we'll be doing lives a little bit more often, but the strengths on Avalanche has been around their gaming eco ecosystem explosion, which has recently really started to get some, you know, some air under it, and then the potential for tokenized assets, which obviously with what they're doing uh, right now with Republic. Now, could be a big play of seeing Avalanche perform even more so than the last bull run. So it could be one of the right. big, big followers. Chainlink getting a little bit of shade from projects like Pith. And mm. if you think about yep. what's happening with Oracles and kind of this decentralized connected universe of what Chainlink lives in, do you like Chainlink at all right now? I think, you know, it's pumped up so much. I think there's better options. Like, I like kind of like how Avalanche, I kind of like how Helium and a lot of the other ones we've looked at so far look on the charts a little bit better. But I still think Chainlink's got a good shot here. Um, I wouldn't count it out. I mean, money flow is still strong in the three-day. We're hitting a big point right here. Price action is generally kind of more bullish, you know, general kind of bullish pattern. If we were to break up from uh, this formation right here, would give us a technical target right around $20, which... If Bitcoin keeps going and if everything keeps going, I think this will be somewhere between twenty to twenty-two dollars um, potentially next on the long term. It you know looks pretty good. This bull div on the monthly, oh my God, this really played out since July, just shot up like that. So, and then you have kind of a trend reversal, and I would consider this more to be a trend reversal of the downtrend, bringing us up into a new uptrend, and then potentially getting up to all-time highs, maybe make new all-time highs and get up to. Eighty-four dollars, maybe even a hundred dollars in next bull run. Man, potentially. I don't, I don't believe I'm sitting next to a bullish Evan. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I, I like to, I don't like to buy at the exact bottom because I know that's not possible. Yeah, I like yeah. to get in when there's more certainty, when there's more. <laughs> you know what I mean? I bought Bitcoin, and now I'm trying to convert that over because Bitcoin has outperformed the vast majority of these throughout this whole ordeal, except Solana and, and Chainlink for the past few months. We'll end up on a couple yeah. of things here, and that is Uniswap. Uh, this was a tweet from Hayden. Uh, he's kind of hitting on a couple of things here, and that is that if you believe in that ETH, this was the thing that uh, Ron, uh, excuse me, Ryan Adams put out from a bank list, saying basically uh, ETH is super underserved right now, super undervaluated. Uh, remember, coming from bankless, very heavy into ETH. But then you have uh, you know, Uniswap kind of coming in and saying, hey, yeah, well, that's part of our own narrative that we believe is going to be the place. So if you think about Uniswap and ETH almost hand in hand here, what are your thoughts on Uniswap if you were trading it? Uniswap looks good. I mean, Uniswap is kind of, you have, you confirmed a monthly bull div that's very good in the macro. That's something that only comes up in these markets once every four years, you know, repeating history right here you know, hit off, this is kind of on your, um, that psychology chart, you know, depression phase right here. Now we're getting close to probably entering the disbelief phase, um, which we're close to. And I think that we could potentially continue forward. Now, the next big place, we're hitting a big place right now around $6. If we could break above there, these wicks right here, this area right around just under $10 would be the next big place. Um, I do think potentially pre-having, having, you probably could get up to around 9 or $10 here. Um, we just got to hope that this trend reversal, which 
doesn't turn out like this one and this one and brings us back down. But I don't think it will. I think, you know, it's kind of an all or nothing right here. I mean, it, a quadruple bottom isn't really a thing. You're either going to, you know, survive here, maybe come down a little bit and continue, or you're just going to come down and go to zero, which I don't think it's going to go to zero. I think we're going to survive and keep going up. So, yeah. All right, so Evan, has been good having you back in the studio. We're definitely yeah. going to do some more trading and, and kind of uh, rocking on a lot of projects out there that you guys uh, maybe are tracking right now. Make sure and get over to the website. All you have to do is go to paulbearnetwork.com. You'll be able to catch the Market Sentiment Index. We're also going to leave a link down below for Evan's channel because Evan does some trading. And yeah. And you've got like a member group, uh, all that. There is, yeah. There's a premium member group, a free Still member group. Still a PBN group, discount? Yes, and there's okay. a free free crypto DCA course, a new free crypto DCA nice. course that okay. shows you kind of places that likely are good to DCA in and places that are likely good to DCA out in the four-year cycle. Very cool. All right, well, good. We'll leave links down below. If you're not in the diamond circle, make sure and get in now. It's another place where we do additional content that doesn't make it here on YouTube. Follow me out there on X, at Paul Barron. Don't forget, visit Evan's channel. You guys are going to love it. We'll see you next time right here on TechBath.